twab. Not nearly as rage-inducing of a twab this week. We have Vault of Glass launch news and some weapon and perk tuning notes, specifically linear fusion rifles. Vault of Glass, as we know, is coming back to Destiny, but we don't know when, except now we do. May 22nd at 10 a.m. PDT, that is a Saturday. Contest mode will be active for the first 24 hours. If you beat contest mode in the first 24 hours, you will unlock challenge mode along with Tempo's Edge, which is a curated list of triumphs that you will need to complete if you want to hit the world first marker. You must beat all of the Tempo's Edge triumphs in the list in challenge mode in order to get world first or potentially some form of a 24 hour emblem. If you beat all the triumphs first, congrats, you're the winner. In order to enforce the triumph requirements in the challenge mode, your team will wipe if you fail the success conditions, I assume for the triumph, for the challenge, during each encounter. Contest mode, challenge mode, and tempo's edge all disappear after 24 hours. The encounter challenges will return later in the season. I'm guessing there's gonna be an emblem for a contest mode clear and a tempo's edge triumph completion clear since it seems like in order to do the challenge mode you need to do all of the triumphs as well i don't think you're just going to be able to do the challenge mode without doing the triumphs bungie says there's a full suite of raid rewards so i guess we're going to find out what they are soon also the opening of vog is now a private space you cannot abandon the mission and go explore venus or anything like that the vault is the only way forward the belt there is a belt, looks like this. Slightly different belt to signify that this raid race is a little different this time around. It also has the winners of the first VOG race on the belt. The clan who wins will get their name placed on it as well. As you may or may not know, my clan, Math Class, used to go by Prime Guard before we made some changes. So pretty cool to see that on these belts. We'll talk about VOG, uh, I guess we'll do it now because I kind of give my thoughts on the weapon and perk adjustments as we go. So I guess you can just skip to that section if you don't care what World Second VOG Datto has to say about Vault of Glass 2.0. The main thing that stuck out to me here was Bungie saying that they don't want to fundamentally evolve the raid into something new. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting VOG to be a completely new raid experience. It seems very much like Bungie wants to keep the core of the experience as you knew it in Destiny 1 intact. Speaking as someone who does VOG every few months and who has done it a couple of times recently, it did not age as well as a lot of the nostalgia lords out there want you to believe that it might have. I get that it's a lot of people's favorite raid, and I'm not here to dump on something that you like, but it's dated. The first half of the raid is literally just killing ads that come out of doorways. The parts that should be short are very long, and the parts that should be long are very short. I hope that Bungie can update this place for 2021 because the differences between what we are capable of in D1 versus now are insane. It's a, almost a completely different game. I don't want to do Templar Part 1, 2, 3 anymore where we just kill ads for 15 minutes. That whole experience can be condensed down a lot. The Oracle section can really drag as well, although at least there's a bit more going on there. I don't think Atheon needs as much tuning as the fight itself holds up much better than Templar does, but there's definitely some room for improvement there as well. Obviously, the fun of VOG the first time through was the unknown factor as well. But without that unknown factor, I do wonder how Bungie's updated version is going to hold up. I do also think that it will be as easy as Deepstone Crypt was on contest mode, unless Bungie has some plans to alter how level scaling works in these modes. You guys know how I feel about the raid right now in terms of how easy it is. I believe Crypt would have been a two to two and a half hour clear without Atrax being what it was. Now we're going into a raid that we already know. I think the first contest mode clears are gonna be stupid fast. 
As for the whole world first, second, world second, first race, again, I can appreciate that they're trying to give us a world first race experience since they're really fun. You know, they're doing the belts and they also drive a lot of traffic. I think there's a conversation to be had about giving out belts for a raid experience that we've already done. But it's cool of Bungie to honor the first world first team on the belts at the least, regardless of who it is or was. I don't know how many people in the more hardcore community are really going to consider this as a true world first experience or belt experience. Now, coming from someone who doesn't have a belt, would it be nice to win? Sure. Would it be nicer to win a belt on a raid we haven't already done? Absolutely. I don't know if I personally would count this in the world first listings as I think quote unquote real world first races are for new raids, not returning raids. I imagine opinions on this may be divisive, but it's not really something I'm looking to have a huge conversation about because I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer here. It's just kind of how do you feel about it? And that's how I feel about it. It's on a Saturday, so a lot more people are gonna be able to compete, and you only need to be 1,300, you heard correct, 1,300 to max out, which is season 13's power cap. It's not even the pinnacle cap. A lot of you are already prepared for the world first race. So from that angle, looking pretty good. If you're not ready, you got plenty of time to go get 1,300. It is not hard to go get 1,300. We'll see how this goes. I don't really mind that I don't need to turn into uh, an insane grinder for two weeks straight just to be ready. You know, maybe just making sure that I have the artifact unlocked and have some good guns. Speaking of guns, a lot of weapon and perk notes are coming up next. I'm gonna be real here. There's only a couple of things that I think are gonna be very notable to most people watching this. I don't know how much people are really gonna care about some of the smaller things, so you might just wanna read this to yourself to get through it a little bit faster, or you can just listen to me talk. Also, the rest of the footage is literally just gonna be VOG. Sorry about the frame rate, but lol, 2014. To start this section of the TWAB, Bungie talks about the goals of each of the heavy weapon archetype roles. For example, machine guns for ad clear, rockets, bursts, sword for sustain, etc, etc. Then they go on to list examples of when certain weapons would be used in GM Nightfalls. Machine guns for breaking shields, clearing small enemies, rockets to burst champions, etc, etc. Stuff that you guys probably already know to some degree. The ultimate point that this gets to is that linear fusion rifles are garbage and they're getting buffed. Precision damage getting buffed 15%, reserves by 20%. The reason is because they're garbage. The reason is because other weapons do the job of linear fusions better, as the linear fusions main design goal is single target sustain with a secondary focus on burst damage. Other stuff just does this as well, if not better. Plus the staying power of linears is not very good because they don't get a ton of ammo. Hopefully these buffs are gonna do something. 15% precision doesn't feel like a ton, but these buffs affect exotics as well. So something like Sleeper Simulant may be making a return to form along with maybe even Queen Breaker, maybe a little Arbalest action, maybe a little Threaded Needle with Vorpal. Huh? Get those ready, have them on standby. There was a note on machine guns not meeting either their efficient ad clear or secondary single target sustain goals and that Bungie is going to adjust this in a future season. I could not agree more with this. Machine guns in GM content feel really weak, especially against bosses. We are so far removed from the Thunderlord top DPS weapon meta that we had a couple of years ago. Machine guns not in the best spot right now. 450 RPM auto rifles, they're bad. Bungie is buffing their damage from 17 to 18 per shot. No complaints from me here. This is an underrepresented archetype. Wouldn't mind seeing some PVE love here as well, just in case that this is only a PVP focused buff. Feel like Bungie usually talks percentages when talking PVE and they didn't hear. So just, yeah, why don't you keep me posted on that one. Bungie is adding a rare linear fusion and breach grenade launcher to the game. K, 
regular fusions, increased damage fall off start distance. No effect on 100 range stat, plus two meters on zero range stat. What all that means is that they're trying to buff up lower range fusion rifles a little bit, AKA faster firing ones for PVP. I will reiterate, PVE buff, please. I want to care about fusions again. I know Reservoir Burst is coming back, but maybe just let's get them. Keep going. Perks, let's talk about perks. Subsistence. Reducing your reserves is not an interesting trade-off for the benefit that you get, and Bungie wants to potentially add it to special and heavy weapons, and reducing your reserves for those weapons would kinda suck. This no longer reduces reserves. SMGs now get the same ammo fraction per kill that auto rifles do, which is 17%, up from 10%. Fantastic change in my opinion i've gotten rid of so many smgs with subsistence rampage or frenzy or whatever damage perk just because i tore through my ammo so quickly great great change really loving this high impact reserves and under pressure are now active as long as their conditions are met it used to be where they wouldn't trigger until you fired the weapon once due to technical limitations uh, no thoughts one way or the other on this. Seems like a quality of life fix. Okay. Unrelenting. It's tough to make it happen in high difficulty content, and the health given was very tough to perceive. So in PvE, you will get an immediate health proc on majors after killing a major, and it heals for 20% more. Cool, but still probably not going to use it in GMs, though. Sympathetic Arsenal now gives plus 20 reload in addition to its regular effect. Again, cool, still probably not gonna use it, even though I probably should because I'm terrible about reloading my special and heavy weapons in GM content. Dragonfly now works on heavy shanks and servitors, and the effect occurs even faster after the Season of the Chosen fix. More quality of life changes, love to see it, no complaints here. Hipfire Grip. They don't want to buff it too much, since if hip fire is too good in the game, it affects the game significantly in, I assume, a way that Bungie does not want it to, but they still want to buff it a bit. Plus one degrees precision hip fire angle threshold, plus 1.2x reticle stickiness fall off distance. You get all that? You got that? All, you know, y'all, everyone knows what that means? Bungie, English. English, please, for for everyone. Basically, what that means is it's going to make hip fire a bit more accurate and a bit more generous if you're using hip fire grip. <coughs> One degree doesn't seem like a ton, but Bungie seems to argue that it actually is quite significant due to the aim assist cone angle being 2.5 degrees at zero aim assist and three degrees at 100 aim assist. The Iron Perks from Iron Banner, Iron Grip, Iron Gaze, Iron Reach, are having their stat penalties reduced from minus 40 to minus 30. That's fine with me. Osmosis and Elemental Capacitor are getting stasis-based modifiers added to their effect set, with Elemental Capacitor getting plus recoil direction and reduced ADS move speed penalty. No Distractions is getting buffed to give plus 35% flinch reduction as opposed to 30% and will proc after 1 second instead of 1.5 seconds. This is being done because Mita Multitool's Catalyst perk, which is currently Outlaw, is getting changed to No Distractions because Mita loses to stuff that flinches you very hard and also Outlaw was basically pointless on that gun. Interested to see how that works out, but the only scout I'm really using is Dead Man's Tail at the moment. Very much looking forward to the Mita is insane now YouTube videos that'll come as a result, though. Celerity and Bottomless Grief, we've talked about those in a previous video, but Bungie is just kind of reminding you that that's still happening. The Thresh perk fix is already live, where it was only working in PvP for certain weapons. It now actually functions properly. Adept Mag and Adept Targeting are getting similar treatment to the Iron Perks, where Bungie played it a little too cautious and they're reducing the penalties, going from minus 20 to minus 15 on the secondary stats. And Adept Mag was fixed because it wasn't giving sword reserves, now it will. Adept Counterbalance is getting buffed a bit more as well to make it feel like it actually kind of does something. Finally, we have the Future section. 
shotguns. Bungie, nor most people do not expect shotguns to just fall off the radar because quick draw is getting tuned. Bungie acknowledges that map design, yes, also contributes to the success of shotguns, but Bungie wants more weapons to be viable on all maps, which they believe they can achieve through more tuning with more specifics to come later. We'll see about that one. Dead Man's Tale, usage is high and is suspected to go higher with the nerfs coming to 120 RPM hand cannons. Bungie did not want to try to jam in even more tuning when there was already so much going on this season, but they have a change coming that reigns in Dead Man's ability to challenge snipers, 120 RPM hand cannons, and other scouts while in hip fire without taking away from the fantasy of the gun. This should not be coming as a surprise to anyone, in my opinion. This gun is absolutely insane with the catalyst, and I suspect the aim assist cones or accuracy boosts given to this weapon are going to be reduced a bit to make it a lot tougher to hit those shots from across the map like you can do right now. Fusions. Bungie does not want to bump these up too much too fast, so they're going to follow up if they need to. The skeptic in me is saying... You probably will need to follow up. All right, we're done. Eververse video tomorrow. Get excited. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.